Happy Sunday. If you believe that air should be clean and free of pollution, that green is good, that climate change is real, that the waters are rising, the temperatures are swinging, and it's time to get to work, then welcome. If you believe that this earth and the cosmos in which it spins is full of majesty and beauty, wonder and resource, then welcome. If you believe God created this planet, called it and everything upon it good, and entrusted it to our keeping, then welcome. Welcome to worship at Old South Church in Boston on this Care of Creation Sunday, when we turn our full attention to the earth, its care and crisis, its resources and peoples, and recommit ourselves to improving our impact upon it. For at Old South Church, we take seriously God's trust in us to care for this good earth, and we need you to join us in that effort. So whether this is your first time or you've been here your whole life long, whether you are joining from Boston or joining from anywhere else around the globe, queer or straight, Christian or not so sure, young or old, we welcome you because we, like this planet, need everyone to join in. The stakes are high, and we can only do this good work with all of you. So welcome. I invite you to visit oldsouth.org slash Sundays at some point this morning. It's on that page where you will find a chance to sign our friendship pad to let us know who you are and what's on your mind and heart today. And it is also where you will find links to our community hour, which follows today's worship. Today, you have a chance to visit and reflect on today's service with Catherine at What's the Word, or you can attend the forum, which today will be reflecting on the film My Octopus Teacher, which explores the fragile connection we humans have with the rest of nature. Friends, it is time now to roll up our sleeves and join with God in this good work of creation. And we begin by coming before our living God in wonder and worship. Welcome. Peace be with you. 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 And peace, peace be, be with, with you. you.
Let us pray. Bless our lament, Creator God. Bless the tears we shed for the resources we have squandered. Bless the sighs we breathe out for a damaged atmosphere. Bless the heads we hang for the creatures lost and exploited. Bless the hands we wring for the things we have broken and wasted. Bless us, we beg you, as we lament. Cradle us, we beg you, as we regret. Restore us, we beg you, God, that we might start afresh. For despite our failures, you entrust to us the stewardship of this earth, its waters and landscapes, its air and creatures. Hear then our lament, our confession, our pain, that it has come to this. And restore us, we pray, that we might start afresh and serve and please you. For you, O oh God, your master of the universe, painter of desert scapes, fashioner of the zebra, and blesser of flowing waters. Amen. Hi, this is Pastor Amor, and today is Care of Creation Sunday, which means we get to appreciate and think about all that God has created. Do you know about the water cycle and how it works? Basically, the water cycle helps us to understand that God created the earth as a natural recycler. Let's think about how this works. First, it begins to rain, and the plants and animals drink the water, including me and you. Then, the water evaporates, so it goes up into the air from the ground, from rivers and oceans, through our breath and sweat. Then, as it moves up, it starts to form into clouds, and the water falls out of the sky as rain. And the cycle starts all over again. And basically, it doesn't really have a starting point. So, in the same way that plants and animals of our world grow and live, this is also where we get our food from. This natural recycling plan reminds us how each of God's creations have a purpose and are meant to live as a part of the whole not on its own, outside of the rest of creation. Each child was created with a purpose too, and a special job that only you can do. You are uniquely created to be exactly who you are. And the work of childhood is embracing and nurturing who you are. And your family, caregivers, teachers, friends, your church is there to help you to know and understand yourself better. God created you and loves the way you smile, the way you laugh, the way you walk, the kind of hair you have, the subjects you like, your favorite games, all the things that make you you. God created and loves them all. As we celebrate Creation Care today, I want to remind each of you that you are part of God's creation and that you are created exactly as you are meant to be. God loves you just as you are. And we do too. Will you pray with me? Let us pray. Dear God, Thank you for being our creator. Thank you for water and plants and animals. 
Thank you that we are wonderful and beautiful in your eyes. Thank you for making each of us unique. Thank you for this reminder to celebrate all your creation. And we all say Amen. put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone has took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. Will you pray with me? May the words of our mouths and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Jesus was an incredible preacher. He could say so much with just a few words. And one of his teachings that we hold most dear is that small steps, though seemingly insignificant at the time, are consequential. Though the smallest of all the seeds, the mustard seed, grows to be more than 6,000 times its size. A now prominent tree in the garden, it provides shade from the heat and is a resting place for the birds of the air. Like mustard seeds, every step that we take to care for creation moves all of us towards a healthier and more sustainable future for us and for all the world's children. This morning, some members of the Climate Crisis Task Force will share some of the steps they've taken, big and small, at home and at work, as individuals and families and together in community to live out the central conviction of our faith that the earth is God's and all that is in it. And we are called to be stewards, good, caring participants in this great interconnected creation. My Christianity obliges me to care for God's creation. Leviticus 25 tells us, the land is mine and you reside in my land as foreigners and strangers. I'm reminded that we are simply tenants here and must behave as a respectful house guest would. As a steward of the earth, I'm compelled to protect all living things, the weather, and the processes. Professionally, I am a sustainability manager for an international general contractor, supporting their commitment to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and water on on-site construction by 50% by 2030. On projects, we support decision-making to provide for long-term livability, resiliency, and sustainability of buildings, increase our expertise in green technologies, environmentally efficient processes, and embodied carbon. We use LED temp lights for all of our temporary lighting. We divert a minimum of 75% of all of our construction waste from landfills and have a national no idling policy on all sites. At home, not only do we recycle, I try to reduce waste by using soap, solid shampoo, and laundry sheets to avoid the heavy plastic bottles. When I can, I purchase products that contain recycled or renewable products, like our paper towels, tissue, and trash bags. We compost in our backyard and curbside. We have a garden that produces nearly all of our produce in the summer months, draws pollinators, and provides natural beauty to our family and neighbors. Hi, I'm Steve Morgan. As we know, the climate crisis is having a catastrophic effect on God's wonderful creation. And we, as children of God, are entrusted with protecting His earth. Liz and I wanted to do more and go beyond recycling. We've settled on three actions that climate experts agree do make a difference. We get our electricity from 100% renewable energy, we compost, 
and we've significantly reduced our consumption of red meat. I want to read you a statement from the research director at um, project, nonprofit Project Drawdown. Eating a plant-based diet is the most important contribution every individual can make to reversing global warming. Liz and I pledge to be stewards of God's earth by developing a consumption conscience where we question our purchasing decisions of do we need it, do we need it now, do we need it new, how is it packaged, and how will it be disposed of. Please join us in protecting God's earth. Hi, I'm Shana. Um, I want to tell you a little bit more about how I became passionate about climate change. When I was in high school, a series of really terrible hurricanes hit New Jersey where I lived. Um, and in one of them, the storm caused a transformer to blow outside our house, which in turn caused an electrical fire in our house, and we lost a chunk of our home. Um, it was really devastating and um, I realized at that point that stories like mine are going to become the stories of more and more and more people across the world, and particularly those with the fewest financial resources to recover. Um, and the important thing is that this isn't inevitable. So I bike and I take public transit everywhere I can. Um, I eat vegetarian and I compost, um, and I advocate for policy change wherever I can. So. I'm pledging to be a steward of God's creation by devoting as much of myself to combating the climate crisis as I can. When I think about caring for creation, I think about my papal. He's a farmer back in rural Tennessee. I think about his life and the life of my mother and her siblings and the reality that it's a life that demonstrates what it means to exercise dominion over the earth in a way that's intentional, that's responsible, that's life-giving and sustaining. I think about what it means to raise cattle, to raise vegetation, and then to use the products of that labor to support oneself and one's family. I think about what it must mean to really follow God's call to care for the earth and all that is in it. In addition to that, I also think about my own upbringing in Knoxville and the reality that no matter what direction I turn in my hometown, I see mountains. I see that close to me. It's literally a 40 minute drive, an embodiment, the living proof of God's great design and of the beauty of this earth. And then I recall that just two hours away, Mountains in that same range are having their tops removed in pursuit of resources for energy. And so at once I see the tension between the lives that humans want to live and the lives that we are called to live. Only one of those two things can win. I choose creation. And so I pledge to be a steward of God's creation by doing what I can to educate myself about the realities of the climate crisis that is upon us, by working with my friends and family to ensure that they are caught up and educated too, and by supporting legislation, both local and national, that holds corporations responsible for the actions that they are taking, in addition to being aware of my own individual actions as well. I have the opportunity to think every day about climate change. I work with a small group of people, policy experts, who develop frameworks, solutions, and analysis about climate change, thinking about how we can meet our goals um, and reduce emissions across the entire country. Um, now, back in June, um, my company realized that we weren't doing enough um, to address racial inequity. and um, a group of analysts and myself got together and developed a framework to start thinking about how can we systematically understand how marginalized populations are disproportionately affected by climate change. Um, and so we developed a framework, uh, we presented it to leadership, um, and we're starting to implement it on some projects. Um, but it is, it is really challenging because as we saw in Texas, um, when the power went out, Low-income minority communities were the first to lose power, and they were the last ones to get it back on. Um, 
and um, this has this is seen everywhere uh, across the effects of climate change. Um, Low-income minority communities will be on the forefront of the damage, and they'll be the last ones to see a recovery. Um, so, seeing this, Old South has informed my faith about how I can connect my work to advocating for marginalized communities, um, the importance uh, of that, and um, on this Creation Sunday, I pledge to be a steward of God's creation by advocating for those who are most affected and most vulnerable uh, to climate change. How has the climate crisis impacted your life? Are you trying to help your workplace become more eco-conscious like Caroline? Or perhaps you're increasingly aware of the intersecting challenges of the climate crisis and its impact on marginalized communities and communities of color. Are you taking steps like these folks to be more conscious of what you consume, reduce your energy usage and protect the environment? When we take action in these ways, we come to embody that invaluable connection between what we believe, what we say, and what we do. It helps us to reconcile the teachings of our faith with our lived experience, such that we are more active participants in the shaping of our beliefs, our sense of calling, our lived discipleship, and our articulation of God's hopeful vision for our future. Our climate action strengthens our connection to God through creation, and our faith strengthens our commitment to speak and act for the Earth. The Climate Crisis Task Force has developed a new tool to help each of us think about small steps we can take to promote a healthy climate. I invite each of you to take a look. Pat yourself on the back for steps you're already taking, and maybe find inspiration and a few new ideas. You can find the link to the Small Steps Survey in the comments section of our worship service today. It will also be in the e-newsletter for the next few weeks. We would love to see everyone take this opportunity to take a few more small steps to care for the earth, because we know that our actions, even if they are as small as a mustard seed, together can grow branches that reach to the sky and create a new, greener future for all creation.
Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we praise you, for you are indeed the potter of creation. You gave us land and water, plants yielding seed and trees bearing fruit. You crafted fish and fowl, cattle and creeping, crawling things. You saw all of this as good, and then you made us and entrusted all of your creation with us. Let us confess that we have failed in that trust. We have taken from the earth more than she has to give. We have removed the tops of mountains in pursuit of energy resources. We have polluted rivers and streams. Lord, we have called into being an entirely new geological era with concrete and weapons of war as the marker. And in all of these things, we have harmed ourselves. We have reimagined and disfigured the human condition. Forgive us, guide us. We pray that we might do the tough work required of us today so that tomorrow is brighter, healthier, and more aligned with the trust you have placed in us to care for your creation. We pray that we might see in each other and in all other things the essence of your great and good design, that design that you called good and indeed very good. And Lord, today we pray for those of us who have asked our deepest prayers, John, Dorothy, Vicki, Anna, Sheila, and Paul. We lift these prayers expressed by me and those at home to you, O Lord, saying the words that Jesus taught us and the language and tradition that flows from our hearts. Our mother, which art the earth, nurturing are thy ways. Thy web of life be woven, thy way be found within as it is all around. Thank you this day for our daily bread and forgive us of our misuse of you as we forgive others for their misuse of us. And lead us not into exploitation, but deliver us from lording it over you and over each other and over all our other fellow creatures. For thine are the waters of life the breeding, seeding, feeding ground. Blessed be your presence in us. May justice and peace dwell among us as you come to us. Amen.
We are pleased to be joined on this Care of Creation Sunday by Barbara Darling and Ted Wade, representatives of the Environmental Ministries team of the Southern New England Conference of the United Church of Christ. Thank you for uh, welcoming us. Uh, the goals of our Environmental Ministries team of the conference are to highlight and to inform our member congregations about the climate crisis and its threat to God's creation and to all of its people and creatures. And importantly, to underscore the interrelated nature of environmental issues with other important social justice issues. We encourage all of our churches and their members to be good stewards of the earth or, of, uh, or to be good stewards of our common home, to borrow the phrase Pope Francis used uh, in his encyclical six years ago. Several years ago, we initiated the Green Congregation Challenge to encourage churches to take on a series of tasks, ranging from things that we can do individually to things that we can do collectively to promote environmental stewardship. Upon completion of a certain number of those tasks, we recognize these churches as green congregations. We have three levels of recognition. Today, on Care of Creation Sunday 2021, we are delighted to join you to recognize the Old South Church as a level three green congregation. We have followed Old South's progress from the formation of its Climate Change Task Force in 2018, to its recognition as a level one green congregation two years ago, and as a level two green congregation last year. Old South has demonstrated a steadfast commitment to this issue. Rich Hassinger, Chair of our Environmental Stewardship Working Group, will share a few words about our work since then. Over the last year, Old South has made great strides to address the climate change crisis. As a community, we've hosted seven educational programs and all church creation care retreat. We've attended hearings and rallies at the State House, sent emails and called our legislators to advocate for policy change and had over 130 church members participate in the Creation Care Voter Project. At the individual level, in addition to our weekly green tips, we've provided resources around food, agriculture, and climate change, and advice on how people can green their financial investments. Old South has also made many energy saving changes in our church building and operations, and our Board of Trustees has restructured Old South's investments so that 60% of our investments now are in socially responsible or ESG funds. We are proud of all that our church has done to take better care of God's creation, but we know that the work is far from done. Though we've reached level three of the Green Congregation Challenge, we will continue to challenge ourselves as individuals and as a church to do more to fight the climate crisis and to be better stewards of the earth. Old South is one of 62 green congregations in the Southern New England Conference, and now one of only 12 churches who have achieved level three or higher. Our environmental ministries team has been proud to share Old South's thoughtful and committed approach with other churches. Uh, and indeed, Old South's format for monitoring and reporting its tasks is now a model for our green congregation program. Once again, Old South is the leader. Recognizing that this is an urgent issue, our Environmental Ministries team is in the process of revising and updating the Green Congregation Challenge to add a fourth level. Our challenge to Old South is to continue its commitment to addressing climate change and environmental justice and to be one of the first churches to be recognized as a level four Green Congregation. Today, we are pleased to present to Old South Church this certificate acknowledging your accomplishment as a level three green congregation and the gift of plantings to grace the pollinator garden at the front of the church. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Ted, Barbara, and Rich. And thank you, Old South Church, for your commitment to God's good creation. We know that each sunrise, each blade of grass, each speck of stardust is a gift from God. We now return a portion of these gifts to create a more green, just, and beautiful world. To give, please visit oldsouth.org donate. 
this morning's offering will now be given and received. Bless these our gifts, gracious God. Bless them to do the holy work of stewardship. Bless these gifts to heal creation, to undo the damage, to mend our relationship with our cousins, the creatures of earth and air and water. Bless these gifts that they in turn might be a blessing to the habitat in which you have caused us to dwell. Bless these our gifts to do some good. Amen.
As we go forth from this sacred time and space, may we celebrate the gifts of God's good creation and our shared lives together. May we recognize our connections to all that is in and on the earth. May we truly and deeply value the inherent worth of all. In this awesome, interconnected web of existence, may we commit ourselves to a new way and feel the love of God growing within our hearts. Go into God's world, planting seeds of love and joy, peace and hope in all that you say and do. And we all say, Amen.